one of the things we have so much fun on here, fun with here on 3 Plus U is this realization that everything that happens in Chattanooga, you tend to see the same people kind of surfacing and lending their support over and over again. We talk about the cliche all the time about how you live in Chattanooga long enough. Everywhere you go, you end up meeting somebody either you know directly or who knows someone you know. So that same level of woven in intricacy, I think, shows its head here because we're talking about the upcoming Big Nine Roots Festival, the new renovations that have happened at the Bessie Smith Cultural Center. So Paula Wilkes joins us. She is with the Bessie, but on the far end of the screen, we have Dion Jennings, who once upon a time was with the Bessie. Now she's with Tennessee Valley Federal Credit Union, and they have been a big supporter of these renovations. So welcome to you both, and it's good to have you back. Thanks for Thank having you, us. Julie. Don't you think that's kind of true in town that it's a we have a city, but it has that small town feel, so it's easy to network and get things done around here. True? Absolutely. All right, Dion, I'm going to throw it to you first then, because I know y'all can't see each other as we talk. So talk a little bit about how the credit union came to be such a strong supporter of the Bessie and why it means so much to y'all. Absolutely. So at TVFCU, we're all about people helping people. And one of our main initiatives is to be big community supporters. And organizations like the Bessie Smith Cultural Center and other nonprofits in our community are doing such great work that we want to make sure that we help them in any way possible. And so, as you know, the Bessie is a, has a special place in my heart, so it's wonderful to work for an organization that is so passionate about supporting organizations like the Bessie. So then, Paula, you know, y'all been around for a long time. You have this great reputation. People know about you being a go-to uh, resource for their own families and their kids and just an enjoyable day to spend. But you did want to kind of bring things current a little bit. So you've gone through this beautiful renovation. We can kind of sneak a peek over your shoulder. It incorporates an area now for kids. It does. So we renovated the museum and reopened in June, and it was thanks to wonderful partners like TBFCU that we were able to do that during the pandemic. But we now have a new African-American museum that you tour through, and it starts with Native Americans and slavery. And you follow a timeline all the way up to current history but we also have a kids area where you can the kids can interact and we have all these interactive kiosks throughout the museum so we're really proud of what we've been able to accomplish and especially with the help of our partners you were sharing with me that on these remote learning days that kids in hamilton county have you see a big influx of visitors on those days so in february a lot of them are going to be out for winter break what a fun thing to do on a staycation to go and tour the bessie Yes, we would love to. Yesterday when the schools were closed for remote learning, we had quite a few students come in. We're booked every day this month with tours from the local schools and schools throughout the region. We all kind of have kids that are about the same ages, mid-teenage years to now college grads. Wink, wink, Paula. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, they're in that age bracket where learning and hearing about race relations really to them feels like ancient history, but of course it isn't. So do you find as moms all the more um, concern about making sure that the museum displays and describes things in a way that can resonate with today's kids? Does that make sense? It does, yes, it does. and for us, we want to make sure that we tell the true history. And so we actually have some um, Black History Month programs going on we have one today at noon that is featuring some of the participants from the Chattanooga sit-ins. And so they will be participating and talking to those here in attendance about it. We have a session next week, which is a wonderful session, which has Franklin and Teresa McCauley, and they will be talking with Dr. Brian Johnson and Candy Johnson, and Stacey Lightfoot from UTC will be moderating. But that whole discussion is on the importance of telling true history to our children. Because if we don't teach this true history, we can't look to a brighter future. And Dion, you were going to say something too. What were you going to chime in with? 
No, I was going to say it's very important because uh, we all need to know our history because it's so easy to repeat it if we don't know what happened in the past. And as Paula said, understanding the true history and not a watered down version really helps our kids understand where they came from and how to make better choices in the future so that we don't return to that. Okay, so it's good to talk to both of you. And I think I know enough to say just for the ones out there who might be not sure what you mean when you say the true history, um, that everything about the Bessie is an effort to be inclusive, not to be exclusive. Is that a fair way to say it? Yeah, that's a very fair way to say it. All right, good talking to you both. So you can schedule your tour or just pop in over at the Bessie Smith Cultural Center. Uh, don't forget about the Big Nine Roots Festival coming up April 9th and 10th. Always, always a fun uh, event in Chattanooga to celebrate that history of ours. You can learn more at BessieSmithCC.org.